Hey guys, how's it going? That was an amazing talk. Wow, thank you so much, Tybal. You made my talk a lot easier because I'm going to definitely go into token bonding curves a little bit. So uh, where is he? I lost him. Thank you so much, dude, for going deep. I hope you guys are paying attention. Uh, so my talk is about decentralizing all the things. I'm pretty excited to kind of, uh, ooh, out of the box. Uh, I'm pretty excited to kind of change the way we think about what we're building. I'll, I know me, I, I feel very revolutionary when we're going into this. That's what really got me into this, like the blockchain revolution, you know? Well, I, I think revolutions are amazing, but I feel like that's just the tip of the iceberg. You know, this is more than, we're not just digital Che Guevara's working on things, you know? I, I think that we kind of have that vibe, but really it's bigger than that. This is an evolutionary movement. We're changing the way humans collaborate. Revolutions, you know, you can have a revolution where you just take down the man, but then you don't build anything up. We're all building things that can replace, that can be used in the revolution. Revolutions are isolated things, right? It's like, oh, the revolution in Catalonia. Oh, the revolution that's happening in Venezuela. Our tools are being used all over the place on all of these revolutions, and they're always happening and constantly evolving. Our Evolutions take time. Revolutions can be really quick. And uh, as you know, we're all behind on our roadmaps. So yeah, this is definitely more, this is more evolutionary. Uh, <laughs> the biggest thing, though, is that revolutions often fail. And I don't think blockchain can fail. I think this technology can't be stopped because that's what it is. It's an evolutionary technology that we're all really diving into. However, these evolu this evolution needs a solid foundation to be built on top of. There's, we, you know, we get ahead of ourselves sometimes, diving straight into the, the gold, which is decentralized governance. But to have decentralized governance, we need to have a decentralized infrastructure to get off of it, to, to build it on top of. So I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to be kind of fun, you know, and I'm going to, we're going to take a, adventure through space and time with our buddy Theo up here. Uh, Theo is, uh, he desires to be a sovereign man. He wants, he is a decentralization maximalist. And he's going to illustrate each of these points uh, through his lifetime, right? So we're going to try to get to the end, of the, the end of the rainbow, the pot of gold, which is decentralized governance. So of course, all of this starts with decentralized money. We were so lucky when Bitcoin came on the scene. Theo was hot to trot, you know. He was right up in there. 2012, he was killing it. Uh, and he was like, Bitcoin's amazing. And then he felt Mt. Gox, and it took him down a couple notches, right? And, and he felt Bitfinex. He felt MintPal, Cripsy, all these hacks, right? They all got to him. And then he realized, whoa, I have decentralized money, but the infrastructure around it's not decentralized. And then Ethereum came into the scene, and he got really excited because 2017, people are doing ICOs, everything's going through the roof, right? And decentralized exchanges start coming out. And he realized, that, hey, I don't need to get screwed by Mt. Gox anymore. I can actually start, I can add this into my portfolio. I can just be in the Ethereum space and stay decentralized by working with IDEX, Uniswap, and all of these awesome crews. And so that brings us to where we are today, right? We have decentralized money and we have tools to start working with it. They're still pretty young and, and pretty shitty, but they're getting better. And then we realize, well, Theo is like, yeah, decentralized money is great, but I'm in Seattle and I'm using Comcast to interact with decentralized exchanges. Well, that's not really that's not really the plan here. It's like, well, if you have a DAO and you're using, and Comcast can just turn off your internet, well, congratulations, you know, yay, yay for decentralized governance. Uh, but he hears about this awesome uh, free network, like a mesh network in Catalonia that people use to actually vote for independence from Spain because Spain was censoring the internet and people that were trying to vote for independence 
they were able to connect to Guifi.net, which stretched all the way to Paris and gave people access, or sorry, not Paris, but southern France, and gave people access to a French ISP. And people were building, uh, at going to schools so they could vote. They would build a tower on top of the school and like uh, connect to the mesh net and vote for independence. So he moves to Barcelona because he's sick of all the American shit anyway. And uh, he meets his buddy Tim. And this is, uh, this is 2021, by the way. So he, Tim has discovered a way to, using Althea and Aragon, actually, to, uh, to m tokenize access to the internet. So he doesn't need to get a contract. He doesn't need to get anything. He, he just needs to get some tokens off IDEX, and boom, he can have decentralized internet access, right? And, and if Tim all of a sudden gets shut down, there's other people that are working with Althea to dive in. So it's really awesome, and he feels empowered. He feels like now he really can't be stopped. But then he's talking to Tim, and he's like, well, what are you using to access these decentralized exchanges? He's like, MetaMask, man, it's great. Well, but what are you using? What do you mean? Oh, you're using Infura, man. Like, who's Infura? I don't know. Oh, well, you better know, right? And so, but Tim, <laughs> Tim, Tim has a way to actually share his internet with, with Theo, because he has a DAP node. And DAP node, which also uses Aragon, what do you know? DAP node became a DAO, and they give people access to, they give you a little box that you can run any node, peer-to-peer uh, -peer -peer network. With one click, you can install Monero, you can install Bitcoin Lightning Network, Raiden, any of the peer-to-peer -peer networks that you want, and they pay you money well, the peer-to-peer -peer networks often incentivize you to run your own hardware at home. So Theo is just enamored with this. And this is uh, 2024 now. He's in Barcelona. Just to keep you guys up to date. Uh, yeah. Catalonia, yeah. And, uh, and so then he decides to get his own DAP node because it'll pay for itself anyway. So he goes to the DAP node DAO. He gets a, he gets a box shipped to his house, good old DAP node. And he started, he, he's excited to share it with his friends and family because Dap No Dow got really big and ended up buying up Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's, uh, all goes to Edu up there. He, he made something magical happen. The, it was a customer acquisition deal, right? So, <laughs> so Dap Node. Uh, now uses Facebook. They took out the back end and replaced it with IDEN3. And, and they use Facebook to connect app nodes. So now Theo can share his network with all of his friends and family on Facebook. They can choose anyone on Facebook or whatever social media platform app node owns because they end up with a lot of them, you know, uh, to to actually share. So you don't need Infure anymore because you've got your buddy Theo or your buddy Tim and you can connect to them and you can choose who to connect to. This is, now we have decentralized hardware options and that infrastructure is really, really important. Now as I said, Dapnode actually, when they buy Facebook, they take out all that privacy sucking bullshit out and they replace it with IDEN3. IDEN3 is a really cool uh, system that allows any identity to make a claim on any other identity. What this means is you get to choose which authorities you trust in. Right now, you know, we kind of have these huge identity monopolies run by nation states. But now we're in 2026. You don't need that anymore. Facebook is like, and with IDEN3 in the background, is what everybody uses to verify identities. Because also, it's private by default. It's not the old Facebook. It's the new one, the IDEN3 powered one, right? So Theo in 2026, God bless his heart, he has a child. He names his child Beyonce. <laughs> it's a very popular name. So Beyonce doesn't get a birth certificate. Right? Beyonce gets a Facebook account, which is private by default. They get to decide who to share it with, right? And Beyonce's identity, just like it used to be, you know, you don't give the birth certificate to the kid and say, put it in your pocket, kid, and you'll figure it out. No, you give it to the parents. And so Beyonce's identity is managed by the IDEN3 wallet, which can manage multiple identities. 
And when Beyonce gets old enough, you know, they can share the identity. But we're not there yet. We're still in, like, I think now we're cruising through 2027. And uh, so, yeah. So, I, and Jordy talked about Ident 3 yesterday. I don't need to go deep into it. You guys can look it up. So now he decides to move out of Catalonia. He loved it. It was great. But, you know, mesh networks are everywhere now, including on Koh Phangan. So he gets to Koh Phangan. <laughs> Kovanyang, Thailand. Uh, he loves it there. And he finds out about all the cool stuff that Giveth is doing out there. They have an amazing system. Oh, yeah, let me see. Cool. I'm going to get to some chalkboard stuff here in a second. So Giveth has been working. Si I'm going to go back in time a little bit. Giveth, since 2019, has been working on some amazing shit, right? They're building economies around causes. And much like that talk before with token bonding curves, we're using these crypto economic primitives that have been built to change the way donations work. Right now, donations are kind of a sucker's game. It's really sad. But when you, there's this tragedy of commons idea that when you donate to a charity, you lose and everybody else wins. The whole world wins because of your support to that cause. This is a major incentive alignment issue. So, Giveth in 2020 actually launched an amazing thing called the Token Engineering Commons, which started working on realigning incentives around the commons. And they built the common stack. It took many years and iteration, which I'll talk about later, to get to this point where Theo, Theo gets to Copan Young and he hears about, and he meets his buddy Jeff, right? And Jeff is working on this amazing project called the Trash Hero Commons. The Trash Hero Commons aims to clean up the beaches of Thailand. And they don't have to do a whole lot of blockchain work. They end up just going to the common stack that Giveth has and building out an ecosystem, an, an economy. To build this economy, man, I don't know, Mike's chalk, this is going to be tough, guys. OK. So to build this economy, he gathers the experts and stakeholders of, that really know what's best. How do we clean up the garbage in, in beaches of Thailand? You know, it's like you really got to get the people that are doing it, the people that are already in the garbage service, the people that are already picking up beaches. Luckily, Trash Hero actually exists right now. This is a real organization. And they, uh, they already have a system of volunteers and people who pick up garbage on the beach. So he gets all these guys together. And they throw down 100,000 X die uh, to, to uh, support the commons, to kick, to initialize the economy, right? So just like Tybold uh, got to tell us all about, we're going to start a token bonding curve, right? OK, let's see. I'm kind of tall, so we're just going to go into there. So this is, this is the price of the token, right? Oh, god, my handwriting sucks, guys. OK, and this is the supply of the tokens. Right? Trash Hero Commons tokens. And the curve ends up looking like this. Woo! Oh, it keeps going. Yeah, oh man. Oops. Okay, so when they put in their 100,000 X die, 50 of it actually goes to this curve. So 50,000 X die. And so that's, the, that's right there. And so this ends up creating what? Oh, man, I didn't give it enough. Let's go this deep. Five mil, right? They get five million tokens right there. Huge, right? So, so they throw in 50,000 X die there, but then you have this other magical thing over here, which is uh, the commons. So we'll just go like this and we'll say uh, Argon, it's an Argon DAO. Spoiler alert. Uh, whatever, Arg DAO, right? <laughs> and so the, this DAO, we call it the commons. And this gets 50,000 X die. Now, they don't get tokens for that. But the thing is, they don't need tokens for that because, geez, they're going to kill their deal on this. So, Because they end up only paying an uh, average price of right here, which is 1.01 X die, right? But right here, we're now at 0 0.04. So basically, the market cap game, you know, they end up, get, they end up with a lot more value on paper than what they actually put down. But the thing is, that sweetheart deal is too good. 
So what we do is we lock their tokens because they could just instantly sell and, and take the money. And, you know, these guys, they're great. They really want to clean beaches, but we can't have them working in a system against themselves where they have to be thought to be altruistic. That's the whole point. The whole point is that we build a system where everyone acting in their own best interest propels the commons forward, supports the commons. People don't need to be working against themselves in a system. That's what we have right now in charity. So they get these tokens, but they're locked. They're locked until this thing sends out 100,000 XDAI. Notice it only has 50 to start. They better make this thing a success or their tokens are going to be worth shit. So now, uh, how do we get more money into this thing? Well, OK, I'll get there. So basically, because Theo, you know, he's no expert. He's no expert in actually you know, garbage collection. He just likes going doing yoga on the beach and is excited about this, right? So and he's, he's sick of like finding all those needles and horrible things. Ugh, the beach is dirty in Thailand, man. So he gets, he buys in right away because he was hanging out with Jeff at all the sovereignty meetups. And so he buys in right there, pays four cents a token, and uh, gets the tokens right away. But all of his money goes to the curve. None of it goes there to start. But then he's like, oh shit, I forgot. I, I need this X die to like, uh, you know, buy a really nice spot on the beach. So he's gonna end up selling all of his tokens right away because he just made a mistake. Oops, I forgot. So, so then when he sells, he gets, uh, let's see, I, I think I need to hit that thing. When he sells, he ends up getting, uh, he sells all 25, he, he put in 1,000 X die, but, uh, so, but he ends up getting out 980. And then 20 ends up going to the Dow. So what this does is this aligns the incentives. Whenever someone decides to take a profit, they're, in, they're donating to the commons. It's great, you know, they're paying for projects, it's really fun. So now, Everybody's aligned, right? And what's even better is that people who don't care about Thailand's beaches start speculating. And they start buying tokens because they think, oh man, it's really low on this curve. And these guys are all experts. They're geniuses. So, like, you know, the price starts moving up because people are buying and people are selling. And as the speaker before said, there's a secondary market, which this allows for arbitrage. And people start like selling into the curve just be to cash in their speculation profits. And uh, they keep funding this DAO. They keep funding the commons by speculating. Now, what's interesting here is that this is a zero-sum game. Speculating is a zero-sum game. And it becomes kind of like a casino, right? Where the house is taking a rake. But here, the house isn't a casino that's just putting it in their pocket. The house is a charity. The house is like trying to ch make the world a better place. And they're using outside people who don't care about it to even make that profit. So this is a really interesting ecosystem. Now, with their tokens, they, they get to actually vote in the DAO. Speculators probably aren't going to vote much, right? But the people whose tokens are locked, like, uh, like Jeff, and the people who actually care about the project, like Theo, they're going to vote because they care which projects actually uh, are, are being part of this. And they care about actually making an impact and cleaning the beach. And because they have a horse in the race, especially the experts whose tokens are locked, they're going to end up funding lots of cool projects that, you know, are like, hey, let's throw a party. You know, I want to buy a keg, and I want to get, like, maybe I'll get some strippers and some cool things, you know, like, bring lots of people to Thai curry, and we're going to have, like, a huge party on the beach, and we're going to clean the whole damn thing, right? And we're going to do that every Tuesday. And so that's a project that Jeff and Theo are excited about supporting. And so then it'll vote, and it'll get money from this DAO. But the money in this DAO is x die, right? And they don't receive XDAI. What happens is this XDAI ends up going into a giveth milestone that's like, hey, throw one party, prove to us that you can make it fun, and then we'll have a reviewer, which ends up being Theo. 
And if he has a good time at your party, then you get your ex die, right? And then you can use that to fund more parties and more milestones pop up. And when this ex die gets released, when Theo actually says, yeah, that was a badass party, man. The curry was fantastic. Uh, we're going to actually turn that ex die back into the bonding curve. And tokens come out. And if the guys throwing the party are like, dude, I don't want tokens, they just cash it out. Like, they only have to speculate on the tokens for, you know, 20 seconds because XDAI is super fast and they can click the buttons pretty quick. So, but then, of course, when they cash out, they end up paying money, they end up paying 2% to the DAO. And the reason the 2% is so small is so that we can encourage arbitrage with secondary markets. Okay, so that's kind of the design of the system. What's really interesting, though, is how the voting happens. We use this thing called conviction voting. Now, this is obviously developed, you know, this, we're in 2029 or 2032 or something like that, you know? And, and uh, we actually use, basically, it's not just the people sending tokens, but the time that the tokens are behind a proposal. And now, it's not multiplied, there's kind of some math that's involved, but the dimension of time is included to kind of make everything curvy. So that when people uh, pull their tokens away, it's not a sharp decline. And you get more of a biomimetic uh, experience. Things are more like how they are in real life. So uh, I can go more into conviction voting if you guys ask questions. I want to leave time for questions. So first, this thing starts at Thai beaches. And they're hanging out in this part of the curve. The price goes down, the price goes up. You know, it's lots of fun. But then they get wild, you know, because this curve keeps going. It keeps going up if they want, right? If, if people start losing faith, it might drop below this point, and people will, you know, they'll start exiting. But when they exit, they're constantly paying money to, this, to, this, to the, the commons. So then there starts being money in here that people with tokens get to control. So it never really gets to zero, because as the previous speaker explained, this is a continuous funding model. And people will start buying in again, right? But then all of a sudden, the governance starts really kicking ass. And they build sustainable models of recycling and using the material over again. And, and they find really cool techniques to keep the beaches clean in Thailand. Now, if they actually solve the problem, they could just exit the whole thing. You know, it would take a couple iterations. But the whole thing can die because the problem's solved. It, it should be able to go away. But in the end, there's still garbage in the world, right? So, they started with Thai beaches in Copanyang. They took over all the islands. There is no more government trash collection. It's all based off the, the commons over here. And then uh, they, once they've t basically taken over garbage collection in the islands, they start taking Bangkok and Chiang Mai. They have this thing on lockdown. They've learned how to do this. And eventually it's Ho Chi Minh City, Kuala Lumpur, and eventually the world. That's right. <laughs> Trash becomes a non-issue for people in, for humans around the world because the Trash Hero Commons has figured it out and they built an economic model where you don't need tax money to pay for garbage collection. You don't need to like steal from people. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit of a crypto anarchist, so taxes are fine, whatever. Uh, <laughs> but like, you don't need to collect taxes to solve the tragedy of the commons. You build an economy where everyone participating, acting in their own best interest, starts supporting the commons. But this isn't going to happen overnight. We're talking 2037 or whatever, right? So, like, it takes a lot of time. And where we are right now, I'm going to skip out of Theo for a second, right? Where we are right now is token engineering is a very young science. And I wouldn't say that it's as robust as civil engineering or chemical engineering. When people do real work in the, in the world, and build real large things, you know, not billion dollar economies, but let's say a bridge, they, they don't just have a white paper and then start constructing it. They actually do a little design validation, right? They run it through some simulations. They, they mathematically express what they're trying to do, and then they validate that design. They use simulations, right? And then 
they like really check and formally verify that that math is correct. And then they build a prototype. And then they're like, oh, well, I guess we thought we'd have this, but instead of we have that, so we go back to the simulation and test what that prototype was like. And then they, maybe they build a bridge. And they realize, oh, shit, we forgot about the wind. And then the Tacoma Narrows, you know, like starts wa waving. And, and all of a sudden, oh, yeah, we got to add that to the simulations, you know. And this is what's going to happen with token engineering. And especially because of what Block Science has put together. Uh, I don't think they've officially released this to the public, but there's this tool called CAD-CAD, which can really start simulating token economies. Because token economies are very different than the general economy. The general economy, when people create a currency with their armies or whatever, right? They have to, they create a regulatory uh, body that says what you can't do. But with crypto economies, we can programmically say you can't do any of these things. We can actually program the things that you can do. So we can start simulating these economies. And we can actually see if the governance model is going to have adverse effects on what the token economy is doing. So uh, the days of writing a white paper are long gone by 2030. Right? Oh, yeah, you write the white paper, but then you spend a couple of years designing your economy, running it through robust simula simulation tools like CAD-CAD. And you have end up with a r real implementation that can be iterated on and iterated on until you have something like Trash Hero Commons, which ends up taking over garbage collection for uh, all of humanity. So we did it. We made it. This is, this is an example of what decentralized governance can look like, where it's the participants are enabled to support this stuff, right? And it builds itself on the foundation of decentralized tools, because you don't think we're going to take over garbage collection for all of humanity without decentralized identity, decentralized hardware, and decentralized internet. We need more than just money. So, uh, I want to give a big shout out to Jeff Emmett, who actually wrote about the Trash Hero Commons. This is a great blog post that uh, kind of dives deep into how token bonding curves work and how curation markets work in general. Uh, Michael Zargum, who is the, man, the like, I don't know, kind of like alien from the future that works at Block Science, guy's a genius. Uh, and of course, Alan and Lorelei, who helped me make this uh, presentation palatable. So. Uh, I, I can open it up for questions. Uh, I work closely with these four organizations and a little bit with Aragon too. Uh, but uh, if you guys ask me an Aragon question, it's just going to Jorge right here, right? So, uh, yeah. Well, he's got the mic. <laughs> oh, yeah. Voluntary. Voluntary taxes. So, okay, so a question from Kevin from MyCrypto was that, is that 2% always just a flat fee or can it be a variable? Obviously, I gave the explanation of like what we're hoping to do with the token engineering commons, but when, when, this, when money comes here, I'm hoping that that fee would be somehow uh, controlled by the variable of how much money is in, in the commons itself. Like, that seems like something that might make more sense, but I got to you know, c cut the scope a little bit for the explanation. <laughs> Thanks for the great talk, Griff. Uh, so I have two things I'm skeptical about. The first one is the hairstyles in the future. <laughs> and Very fair. <laughs> and the second one is, so uh, in this model, you're actually uh, taxing each transaction, right? Each buy and each sell. So basically, the incentives for the DAO is an active like buy and sell market. So a calm curve bond won't generate as much as a volatile uh, curve bond. So this is kind of like options and futures where like the incentive of the DAO becomes maybe pump and dump uh, on the curve, repeated pumps and dumps, you know? So might be kind of violent experience for any outside investor. So any kind of comments on that? Yeah, I mean, I had to give a, a relatively simple example because we haven't built one yet. You know, we really need to build a commons and see the unknown unknowns. Uh, this is probably the best way to align incentives. 
at least or, or a first way to align incentives. But until this thing is built and we see what does it look like if it's super volatile. I mean, that's, like you said, that's what we would want because that just keeps feeding the commons. But th does that have other negative side effects on people that are participating? Uh, in the end, this is a governance token. Does it need to be volatile? I mean, these are questions that I think I'm excited to really see what happens and not theory, not to put so much theory behind it and guessing. Let's build one, you know? Let's build one and see. We'll, of course, do real robust engineering. We'll design it. Or it's not going to be like just like kick it out and then like throw it out, you know, and see what happens. We'll do the best that we can to design it. And then it's just the first one. And then we iterate and we see the problems. We see problems we can't even theorize about. And then keep going and keep going until we're there. It's a long game. Yeah. Oh, no more questions? Ah, shout it. Here, who, who's coming next? Oh, Yalda, you're next. Here, can I ask questions while she's, uh, OK. Yeah, it's like 20 years, man. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, our lifetime. Our lifetime. Yeah, I'm excited to see what. Yeah, so he's talking about like changing this curve a little bit so that it's a little more exciting. Maybe. Maybe we go like this, and, and we go up, and then we go down, and, and, and you know, we can like, start capturing people at these points and get them stuck there. Like, maybe, man. Like, I'm excited to see what we do with this stuff. Token bonding curves are so young, and most people are just doing lines or like FOMO 3D, you know? Like, like, like I, I want to see, I'm excited to see what happens here. But, you know, the cool thing is we'll probably do that in a simulation, and we'll see, well, that's crazy. It's not going to work, you know? And then, but maybe it does. We'll see. Okay. Thanks, guys.